Good afternoon. Welcome back. We are out of focus, but it is Sunday, November 26th, 2023. Heading into this last few days of November, we have a couple of birthdays and a couple of events to talk about. So we're going to dive right in and go all the way back to 1959. We got two cup races that happened on this date. 1959 at Columbia, South Carolina, the winner was Ned Jarrett. But this counts towards the 1960 season. This was actually the second race of the 1960 season, though it happened in 1959. Uh, going all the way back to early days of NASCAR through the late 60s, that the uh, first races of the season were actually in the previous calendar year, just the way they did things. Don't know why, don't know how, just the way it happened. Same thing happened in 1967 at Montgomery, Alabama. This was actually classified as the second race of the 1968 season, and that was won by Richard Petty. So two Hall of Famers, one on this date, Ned Jarrett in 59, and Richard Petty in 1967. These wins count towards the following season record. So with that, uh, we have a couple birthdays we're going to talk about. <clears throat> Born on this day in 1953, uh, she was a cart PPG driver in the early 80s. I believe she attempted a couple Indy 500s and did not qualify. That would be Miss Desiree Wilson. I want to say she's the only woman to ever score a point in an F1 race as well. I believe she scored a half a point in a rain-shortened race in the early 80s. Maybe late, late 70s, if memory serves me correct. Born on this day in 1954, former, former ARCA driver. And he ran a handful of Cup Series races as well, Mr. Dave Simcoe. Then our final birthday, we do have some cards, so we'll show you that. And we'll, we got him set up in the order of his career, not the order of the card's print runs. But born on this day in 1956, he's a former Cup Series champion, three-time Daytona 500 winner, and a Hall of Famer, currently works for NBC Sports, Mr. Dale Jarrett. Started his Cup Series career in 84, running a couple of races Ran one race in 86, then he went full-time uh, partway into the season in 87, about five races in, was hired by Eric Friedlander, finished, I believe, second that year in Rookie of the Year to Davey Allison, had a couple top tens, a couple strong runs, that uh, team folded at the end of the year, he moved over and split, the, he ran a full-time season in 88, split in time between Cale Yarbrough's team, Haas Ellington's team, 1989, uh, full-time in Kale's car, the Hardy's Pontiacs. Of course, I think it's so funny that they use a 1989 photo on a 1992 card. So in 1991, he went full-time with the Wood Brothers, but in 1990, he was uh, back in the Bush Series, didn't have a ride, and Neil Bonnet got injured. So he took over for the 91 and 90 seasons. 1992, he goes to Joe Gibbs. Kind of starts his career uptick there. <clears throat> Wins a few races. And then, and I always like these cards, the 94 VIP, the kind of the artist rendering cards. I think those are nicely done. Spends a year in the 28 car. Gets a win at Pocono that season. Then he moves over to the 90, in 96, he moves over to the 88 car. Of course, this is the quality care car where he has his most success. Several wins, the aforementioned championship. And got two of his three Daytona 500 wins in this car. 2001 rolls around. Quality care is gone. UPS is on board. Of course, they have the Dale Drive the Big Brown Truck promotion. He's with that team till 2006. 2007, he rolls over and drives for Michael Waltrip Racing, where he ends his career. In 2008, ran a few races and then called it a career. I believe it was 2008 or was it 2007? Yeah, it's 2007 results there. So, yeah, 2008, he ran a few races, ran the All-Star race, and then he was done. So we got some of his cup cars here. There's the Wood Brothers car he ran in 90-91. Good look at the 92-93-94 Interstate Batteries car that he ran with Gibbs. Again, the one year he ran the 28, he was just keeping the seat warm for Ernie Irvin, but what a career he had in this car. Now you see the QC, that was the original car, and then you see it kind of, you still see the QC on the hood there, and they went from Ford Credit, 
red carpet lease they kind of switched it around i might have those two backwards yeah i think i have those two backwards and then they just put the quality care wording on the hood eventually again that was always a strong car uh, he ran a couple paint schemes with the UPS. This is not the original one. I did not have a card that really had a good view of the original, but it was white on the front and kind of had a stripe that went up the, the golden stripe there, and the back half was brown. <clears throat> and then we talk about the UPS car that he ended his career with. Of course, David Rudiman would take over the UPS car after Dale retired, but there's a good look at a couple other paint schemes he ran. And then I just kind of thought this was a nice photo there. Then we'll start talking a little bit about his Bush Series career. He had a self-owned Bush Series team for a long time. Had various different sponsors and interesting sponsors. So there you see Shoe World. He had Band-Aid for a minute. White Rain. And this was when Brett Favre was kind of a co-owner of this team as well during this era. Got some car pictures. Uh, weird seeing a car with the word crunch on it kind of an invitation to hit it but nestle crunch he was going to run the full season in 1990 with this car then when bonnet got injured he got called up and then he scrapped the plans so how different how different the face of nascar would look today if neil bonnet never got hurt in darlington in 1990 that's just another one of those what ifs you know if if neil misses that wreck and finishes his career at the wood brothers let's say a couple more years Jarrett never gets a call up maybe he has maybe he wins the bush title in 1990 and and then 1991 he gets who knows what car he gets into but big what if there's the shoe world and pick and pay car he didn't run that one but maybe a year or so band-aid car of course that band-aid sponsorship floated around to a few different cars i think we got some moments here of course DJ, this is his first of three Daytona 500 wins. 1992 at Watkins Glen, if you go back and watch that race, Kyle Petty was leading. Him and Dale Earnhardt got in a crash near the end. Um, Dale Jarrett had been having problems all day. Kyle hopped in his car and rode around the, a lap like that. So uh, kind of fun. Go back and watch that one on the YouTube. And then Dale's last points-paying race was at Bristol. And... Uh, Bristol did a thing where they had these little placards, I guess, in the seats. And they asked the fans to hold them up. And it spelled out, thanks, Dale. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, nice way for Dale Jarrett to uh, end his Cup Series points paying career. Like I said, he'd run the All-Star Race a couple months later. And then call it a career. So anyway, that has been birthdays and events for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. Really, really would appreciate it. So tomorrow, as per normal, will be Mailbag Monday. And, uh, again, you've seen what we picked up yesterday. So we got some stuff. We got more stuff to rip. We got more stuff than we know what to do with here. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Really, really do appreciate it. And we will see you tomorrow.